welcome back to What's the Dill, episode 49. Thank you all for checking back in. Um, thank you all for being here, listening, liking, subscribing. Um, I want to get into today's episode, but uh, first, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, you may have listened to last week's episode and noticed that there was a pretty big blooper um, at the beginning of the episode. I forgot to cut out a part of a mess up um, in the intro, and so I like burped, I like kind of said a bad word, I was kind of frustrated when I was recording it, so I apologize for saying a bad word and putting it out there if you heard it. I also apologize for keeping that um, mistake and blooper in there. You don't need to see the behind the scenes of how this sausage gets made and uh, you know, I'm human, I make mistakes and you know, this is not all done in one take. So thank you for bearing with me, I apologize. Or if you thought it was funny, then you know, you're welcome because a couple of people reached out to me and were like, hey, I think you have an unintentional blooper at the beginning of your episode and it was definitely unintentional. So thank you all for everyone who reached out and I apologize for letting that stupid blooper be in there. I was really embarrassed, but I'm human, I make mistakes. So now that we've covered that, let's get into today's episode, episode 49. This episode of What's the Deal is about the month of May, Mary, Mother of God, and how y us young men can learn from her example. Because a lot of times we don't think of Mary as like this masculine figure, this person that we can learn from as young men, as young Catholic men. But Mary is an incredible example of humility, of obedience, and faith. All things that we need in our lives as men. We need to follow Christ more closely. And when we think about Mary, she is always pointing us towards Jesus. You know, she is always, when we pray to her, when we ask for her intercession, she points us to her son, Jesus. So it's like, what better ally to have in our corner than Mary, our mother, but also Jesus's mother. So um, that's kind of the intro for what we're going to tackle today. So again, May is the month of Mary in the Catholic Church. You know, there's May crownings, you know, Immaculate Mary. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, my voice is uh, my voice is a little, little off today, but you know the song, Immaculate Mary. All these things done in honor of Mary. May crownings, um, you know, done at all Catholic schools. Always so cute to see all the little kids with the May crownings and the music. It's like the cutest thing ever. And so we see Mary um, as a central figure in our faith. May is a month to honor her. Um, and so what are some ways that we can honor her by following her example? And again, like our world is not filled with people who are trying to support men following the faith. Like the society we live in, our American culture is not saying, yes, young Catholic men, be humble, be obedient, follow God's will. No, they're saying be productive in society, you know, stand up for yourself, you know, make money, you know, reach the highest of your potential or else you're a failure. If you don't have all these great things in your life, then you are a failure. If you don't reach success, then you are a failure. That's what the world says. But we know that a relationship with Christ and following Jesus is something that's kind of the antithesis of what our culture promotes. So when we look at Mary, it's not often this like super obvious thing like, oh wow, Mary, yeah, totally can learn a lot from her as a young Catholic man trying to follow God. Like, yeah, like, you know, she's a sinless, um, you know, mother of God who, you know, just like followed Jesus to his death. Yeah, I can totally learn a lot from her. Like, it's not the most obvious thing, especially when you compare, you know, to other like people like Aquinas or Ignatius of Loyola. Um, you know, Chesterton, all these like great minds, thinkers, like masculine ways. But I think Mary holds some strong keys in the life with Christ. Okay, starting off. Number one, I think the first key that Mary holds in our relationship with Christ as young men is humility. Humility is like, I feel like a super misunderstood virtue. Humility in, in our society, in our culture nowadays is kind of looked at like weakness. Like, oh, this super humble guy, this guy, he's like super humble, doesn't stand up for himself. Everyone walks all over him. Like that's how humility is looked at. But what humility truly is, 
is, you know, it's the virtue that helps us recognize ourselves, our limitations, our weakness, but also knows that it's the virtue that helps us know that we have to rely on God. Because what does the world say? You need to be self-sufficient, men. You need to be like a doer. You need to find success. Start a company, you know, invest in the stock market. That's what men do. You know, th these are kind of the virtues that our culture extols. But like the purest virtue is humility because it's the ultimate expression of looking at ourselves in a true way and following God. It's like having the real, real view of who we are. And who we are, you know, we are all broken. Everyone falls short of the glory of God. But it's also this recognition that God, all good things come from God. All of our strength is to, to be relied on from God. All grace comes from God. Um, you know, and humility helps us develop a deeper sense of empathy and compassion towards others. Because think about it. Humility is like the 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 ability to look at ourselves. You know, humility is the ability to look at ourselves in a realistic and honest way. And that helps us with our relationship with God, knowing that we have to rely on him for everything, and it helps us in our relationship with others because it allows us to have compassion and and love for others more easily. Because think about it. What's the easiest thing in the world? I think for me, the easiest thing to do in the world is to find fault in others. That is like so easy. I don't know why it is so easy. Like I'm so broken that I can find fault in others so quickly. But when it comes around to turning the mirror back on me, and to find fault to myself, you better believe I have a lot of excuses. I can justify all of my actions and yeah, I can get through a day bobbing, weaving, rope-a-doping without really ever, uh, you know, taking accountability for what, you know, I do if it's wrong. It's, you know, it's like, hey, you're saying I did something wrong. Actually, it's because of what they did, how they treated me. Or actually, it's because of all of these institutions and work and create of how other people, you know, how I'm just like falling victim to all of the institutions of our society. That's why I act the way I do. And, um, you know, treating others in life and in work, you know, coworkers, people we go to school with, um, people in our lives, our brothers in Christ, our sisters in Christ, you know, maybe people that annoy us, maybe that people that we're to be jealous of, maybe people that um, we aspire to be, you know, like find, you know, kind of looking at all of them and finding fault in everyone else and finding where Jesus and God needs to work in their lives. You know, I can find other, I can find the areas in other people's lives where God needs to work. Oh boy, I can easily find where God needs to work in other people's lives. But humility helps turn it back into me, turn it back onto me and look at myself and have the realization that, hey, like I fall short every single day and I need to rely on God so much and have the humility to say, hey, like Lord, like, you know, I want to develop a healthy relationship with you and I want to recognize that you are the source of all goodness and that I am here and my purpose in life is to serve you and to serve others and to help build your kingdom. So Lord, I want to have humility because I want to serve you, serve others and help build your kingdom. That's what humility helps to do. It helps realize, helps us realize that, but that's not what the culture tells us. The society around us tells us that you're here to be a productive member of society. And, you know, you better fall in line because, you know, you better, if you get too big, we're going to cut you down. And if you're too, you know, weak and if you're too small, you don't help anything. You're just a waste of time and a waste of talent. But that's not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to serve others, serve God, build his kingdom. And then along the way, being a productive member, being part of society. But God, humility helps us build the kingdom, but also realize that God's will for us is to also exist in society. So when we trust in God, that he will take care of our jobs, take care of our school, take care of our relationship, take care of our community, when we trust in him fully, then we're able to then really, really live out our career, really, really live out our talents. Um, you know, and so I think humility is the virtue that helps us be open to 
recognizing that we need to lead on God. Humility is the virtue that helps us r- recognizing that we're not perfect. Because again, like, it's so easy to build walls in my heart. I-, I build walls so easily in my heart to try to protect myself from correction, protect myself from people criticizing me. And humility kind of opens my heart and realizes that God is in control of my life. And that I kind of every day need to let God be in more and more control of my life. And when I'm more humble, when I really practice humility in my life, like, you know, I can see that I have so much more to work on, which is kind of the paradox is like, the more humble I am, the more pride I see in my life, the more I see I need to work on in my life. And that can be frustrating for me sometimes. Like, you know, when you hear saints, when you hear like the journals of saints where they're saying like, Oh, you know, I just, I'm, I sinned every day and I had to go to confession because I was such a sinner. And you're like, wow, Mother Teresa, great to know that you went to confession every day. I'm sure you had a lot of sin to confess. It's like, you hear that and you're like, how could they, you know, eat sin? Like what could have Mother Teresa or John Paul II ever done to sin? But my kind of tiny little like micro piece of that is the more I've prayed for humility and exercised humility in my life, the more I've seen the roots of pride in the garden of my heart. The more I've seen my heart and be like, wow, there's a lot of roots of pride here and I need to like rip them out. I need to tend to the garden of my heart. I need to put some, uh, you know, miracle grow and spray down these weeds in my heart because like there is pride that is like permeating my thoughts, my soul, my heart that is, you know, holding me back from loving others well, holding me back from trusting in God in my life. And, um, you know, I think a really big thing for us young men in society is trusting that God has a plan for us for our careers, trusting that God has a plan for us in our work and in our ability to provide. Because, you know, with a wife, kids, you know, a girlfriend, fiance, all these future things that we have to take care of, you know, grandkids, you could have grandkids right now. And with all these future things we have to take care of, with all these things and people, relationships we have to take care of, it can be stressful. You can, I can feel like the weight of the world on my shoulders. But humility lets us recognize that Jesus understands the physical needs of our life and the needs of our family and the needs of our loved ones. And he is in control and will provide all of those things the more we trust in him. We do not have to fight because Jesus is going to take care of the physical things, not just the spiritual needs in our hearts, but the physical things. I mean, look at here. Look at this apartment. Like, I have a beautiful apartment, things hanging on the wall right here, you know, a car to drive. That all comes from God. That is the goodness of God. Humility helps me realize that that is from the goodness of God. Not just my hard work, but the goodness of God in my life. So Mary, you know, the ultimate example of humility because she said yes. God said, you are going to bear the son of God and be his mother. And she said yes. Didn't ask questions. She just said, let it be done to me according to thy word. So that is the ultimate example of humility. She didn't, she just said yes and trusted in God's plan. And so for us men, we can follow Mary's example. This month of May, we can have extra intentionality of following Mary's example of humility and use it every single day in our lives so we can draw closer to Jesus and trust in God more. Number two, we can learn from Mary and learn from her obedience to God's will. So similar to humility, um, you know, obedience is hard. You know, again, what would you, what do we think that American culture um, says men should be? Obedient? No. Like men are, you know, you know, they were known to be brash. We're known to be, you know, out there standing up for ourselves, you know, being like fighters, not obedient. I don't think like obedience is something that jumps out in our minds of, hey, like what we need to be. Hey, remember out there, if you're a young Catholic guy out there, remember, you need to be obedient. That's not really something we hear a lot. But, you know, obedience helps us cultivate a spirit of receptivity in our lives to God's will. Because God's not just going to write in an email to us. Hey, this is your will. This is my will for your life. And, you know, there you go. So just follow these bullet points. Let's circle back in uh, 35 years, send. Like that's not what's gonna happen. God reveals his will to us for our lives little by little. And we need to be obedient little by little by little every day. Because how can we be obedient in the big things that Christ has for us? 
if we're not obedient in the little things that God has. And I feel like that's such a like a classic thing that dads say. And if I can't trust you with the small stuff, how am I going to trust you with the big stuff? But it is so true. Like obedience to God's will starts in the little things in our lives. And we need to be obedient to the authorities in our life, to our brothers and sisters in our life, to, you know, the the church. You know, I think it's really, really easy nowadays to criticize the church. It's so easy to see what's so wrong with the church and church authorities and church figures and priests and bishops. It's like actually like there's pretty much like a ton of conversations that dominate like the Catholic church. Just what's wrong with it? Look at all these people that are messing up our church. And everyone, there's factions that get created, but like God still calls us to be obedient to the authority figures and the authorities of the church that he instituted. And that's not easy for men. That's, we want to speak our voice. You know, we want to, we want to give our opinion. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to give my opinion on everything. Even if people don't ask, I want to give my opinion. You doesn't matter what it is. I got an opinion on it and I want to give it to you. Like, and obedience helps us recognize, it helps us overcome our selfish desires and it helps us develop a deeper sense of trust in God. And so, you know, like we're fighting against our desires to provide for ourselves, to, you know, give ourselves the things that we want most, you know, to please ourselves, to, you know, be out there only serving myself. Like as men, it's very easy to want to only serve ourselves. And I, and you know, I know that like men were servants and we were out there, but like, it's not easy to be a man, to give your time, give yourself, give your money, give your, you know, your twenties, your thirties, give of yourself always. And like obedience helps us be receptive to that call from God to serve others, to serve our family, to serve our friends, to serve our community, to serve our groups, to serve our ministries. And like, think about it, like think about, you know, work or think about like a youth ministry you're in or think about, um, you know, a college club you're in or think about your like share group. There's dynamics of power and who's a pastoral leader and who's who and, you know, who says what and who listens to who and who answers to who and what the org chart is and who got the job from who and there was nepotism and the only reason he has this position is because he said yes in the summer and I didn't get that position because I wasn't around. And like, think of all of the organizations that we're a part of and the hierarchies there are and it can be hard to be obedient sometimes, especially as men, it can be hard to be obedient to the authorities in our life. And I think, again, as men, we're kind of called to provide and to protect. And so with that, you know, we want to stand up for ourselves. We want to stand up for others, but we don't want to mix that up with stand, you know, with only serving ourselves, with only like looking out for number one. And, you know, if I said to you, hey, the, one of the most important things in your life is to be obedient to the people in the organization that you're in, the ministry that you're in, the small group that you're in. Like, that's hard to hear. That's really, I know it's hard to hear for me. Like, I know, like, I don't want to be, I'm not naturally obedient. I'm not a naturally obedient person. I'm a natural, like, figure it out for myself guy. I'm not naturally just going to like listen to someone. Oh, like you have a made up title that someone in this organization gave you. And so I'm just going to listen to you. Like, I'm not like that. I am naturally like, uh, I'm naturally dubious of like authority. I'm naturally like skeptical of people speaking into my life of getting pastoral care or getting, um, you know, people to speak into my heart because like, I feel like I'm self-sufficient. I feel like I can do it. I feel like I can understand things. I feel like I can take care of any task spiritually, physically, for work, for school. I can take care of it. And obedience is something that helps me fully participate in the church and receive the grace that God has for me in these organizations, in our church, in our ministries, in our schools, in our careers, you know, through our work. Obedience helps me receive that grace with, without being so like tight, without being having a really hard heart. So 
we can learn from, from Mary to be obedient. And again, Mary heard the call, said yes from humility, and then had the obedient, then, and then was obedient to follow God's will for her life to be the mother of God. She was obedient. She didn't say, hey, I actually have another idea. How about if we do this in 10 years? No, she said, have be done to me according to your word. And then she did it right now. So we as men, we need to learn to be obedient. And it's not that we need to learn to be obedient so we can just like get walked all over, but learn to be obedient to understand that Jesus has control of our life and that when we serve for the good of others and then when we are obedient to the church and we are obedient to authority, that that helps us receive from these things in our life, the things that God has for us, the institutions that God put in place for us in our life. And third, the third thing we can learn from Mary in the month of May of how we can live that out in our lives as men in the Catholic Church is to follow her faith. Faith is the foundational part of our relationship with God. It helps us, it's a gift from God and it helps us receive and re receive the truth of God through his church, through the Bible, through the tradition of our church, and it helps us receive the goodness that can come from that. Faith takes away that um, evil, you know, that evil uh, twin, that voice of skepticism that can always be there. You know, that, that, that nagging voice of a cynic that can be in our hearts that says, why would you trust this? How can you trust this? You've never seen God for yourself. Um, how do we know the Bible is true? How do we know all these writers didn't just make this up? How do we know the church has the best um, out for our lives? Is living a Christian life really worth it? How do we even know, like, how can we stay away from sin? How can we raise a family in this crazy world? Faith allows us, to, allows God's providence to work in our life and believe that he's always in control and believe that he loves us in good times, but especially in hard times. I think as Americans, we know, and Americans, and I would say maybe all over the world, but like we feel like the current climate of our world, our culture, is it's like a hard time. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of division politically. There's a lot of division um, you know, spiritually, there's a lot of factions of people who say, you know, be a Christian. No, be a Muslim. No, be an atheist. No, follow politics. No, follow sports. No, be a nihilist. There's all of these different ideas that are being floated out to us in the media, social media, books, newspapers, everywhere. There are people telling you how you should live. Faith allows us to trust that God is has been in control the whole time. Faith allows us to trust that God is going to provide for us every single day, and he's going to bring us through these hard times. So do you think that currently it is like a divided time in America? It is a divided time in our lives that relationships are like tattered? Well, you might think that, and that that is true. I think that too, that like there's a lot of pain and a lot of woundedness in our country right now. Faith is the foundation of which we believe Jesus has the answer to bring us out of that. Now, that's not what the media wants to tell you. The media wants to tell you, do not believe in God. He has nothing for you. Trust in the works of man because only we can get through this. And if we just have a little bit more money and a little bit more political power, then we'll really have the answers for our lives. But we all know as followers of Christ that Christ doesn't promise good times only. Christ doesn't promise only the good times. No, in fact, Jesus said, hey, there's going to be hard times. And, you know, Jesus says, hey, if they hate you, they hated me first. Like, dang, 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, they might, they're going to hate you for following me. It's like, I, when I hear that Bible verse, that if they hate you, they hated me first. When I hear that, I'm just like, that's so hard. Because, like, I don't want people to hate me. I want, I want to be liked. I want to be loved. I don't want Jesus's word and Jesus's gospel to be divisive for people. I want people to experience the joy of the gospel. I want people to know that no matter what, sin, failure, success, Jesus loves you. No matter what you do in your life, Jesus loves you. 
No matter how much you sin, Jesus loves you. No matter how successful you are, Jesus loves you. No matter how far you turn away from God, Jesus still loves you. And I saw this great quote where it said, I don't want to tell people about how much, I don't want to spread the gospel and tell people about how much I love Jesus and say, hey, you should follow God because look at how much I love Jesus because I fail in my love for Jesus every single day. But I want to know, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and Jesus loves you every single day and that his love never fails for you every single day. So it's not about my love for God and how much I, I, how greatly I do that because I fail in that every day, but it's about how much God loves you and never fails in that every single day. So faith helps us recognize the truth in God's revelation through these times, through good times, through bad times, through feasts, through famine, through political you know, turmoil through empires, the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, World War I, World War II, coronavirus. Faith allows us to see the truth in God's revelation through all of it. And, that, and that's something that we can hold on to, this gift of faith that we have, this gift of faith that we can follow God, we can trust in the one who never fails. You know what? If I said, hey, you have to trust me, I'm never going to fail you. That's a lie. I will fail you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, do not trust me that I'm going to lead you perfectly 100% of the time. That's impossible. I'm a fallen, broken man. But if we follow God and we point to the one who never fails, that's something we have to have faith in, that we point our lives and orient our lives to the one who never fails. And so Mary's faith in um, you know, following her, you know, her will for God, her, in our, in her, in Mary's faith in um, following God's will for her life, which was to bear the son of God, watch him grow up, see him die on the cross, and then feel that, you know, that stake in her heart, but then still follow through on that to love him. Um, you know, that's faith through the good times and then the bad times. So, as men, it, it's faith can be something that, e as men, it can be easy to lose faith, lose faith in society, lose faith in ourselves, lose faith in others. But God calls us to have faith in him and that he is looking out for us. He's looking out for the world. He's looking out for all of those in our lives and to trust that God's divine touch in our lives is the best thing for our lives. So faith allows us to know that God's will is the best thing in our lives. Thank you so much for watching, listening today. Make sure you like and subscribe on all of the podcast platforms. Make sure you check out all of our social media, our website um, for Backseat Media. Um, and thank you so much for you know continuing to listen uh, in this this podcast because I really appreciate it. And you know, a reason I love doing this podcast is that like there are not a ton of examples out there in the culture of how to be a man for Christ, how to live out our faith. And so this podcast is a little you know, piece of how I think we can live out the faith, how I think that God is calling us to live out our Christian faith in the world. You know, we're not all um, you know, just gonna be in our homes 24 seven praying all the time. So how do we do that? How do we live as men out in the world? How do we go out there and do it every day? Um, and so I want this podcast and the rest of the Backseat Media content to be um, part of the solution for that. Be part of the how for how we live out our faith in this world, in this society. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Please reach out, DM, message, whatever. I love hearing from all of you. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.